Okay, great. Uh, now, introducing the next speaker, Marcel Kernish. Stead Made Easy, the Stead upgrade for the Time Resolve Confocal Microscope MicroTime 200. Well, thank you for the introduction, WE. So, welcome everybody. Today, I'd like to present our newest development, the Stead upgrade for our Time Resolve fluorescence microscope, the MicroTime 200. And as you see on the author list, many, many colleagues, they contributed to the work that I'm going to present here. So in the following, I would like to show you how STAT is integrated in our confocal system. Um, you see here on the posters that we are always into the time resolution, so uh, we also use it here instead. And I'll show you how to utilize this time information in STAT analysis. I'll show a few applications, and one of them will include also multi-species STAT. And then, in the end, I'd like to focus on a few STAT applications on the single molecule level also. So, I believe that everybody is quite familiar with the STAT principle. So, to the left, you see the excitation, fluorescence, and the stimulated emission in the energy diagram of a fluorophore in relation to its excitation and emission spectrum. So for STAT, we use excitation and a STAT wavelength. And the two wavelengths, typically, uh, they come from a laser, are overlaid and then coupled into the microscope, into the sample, where we have a diffraction-limited excitation focus uh, that you see here, which is overlapped with a donut-shaped STAT focus. And since we use very high STAT powers, molecules in the outer areas of the excitation focus are forced into the ground state, and we are only left with fluorescence from the center of the donut, which then is collected. So this principle was published by Stefan Hell in 1994. And uh, you may be aware that he's also one of the speakers tomorrow afternoon. So typically, if you would set up a STAT microscope, you first would, uh, you first would create the donut focus and then you would have to overlay the excitation and the STAT laser. And you will see that we use quite a different approach. So we have as excitation laser the 640 nanometer and as STAT laser a high power 765 nanometer laser. So these two are overlaid and fiber coupled and the output of the fiber goes into the main optical unit of our microscope. So inside the microscope the two lasers take exactly the same beam path. The output of the fiber is linearly polarized. We need a quarter wave plate to have circular polarization. The lasers are reflected by a dichroic mirror and then passed into the sample focused with, um, with a high numerical aperture objective. Now the donut is created with a very special segmented face plate which leaves the excitation laser unaffected. So if you look here at back reflection images from gold beads, really small beads, uh, then you see that with 640 nanometer going through this face plate, you have mainly a diffraction limited excitation spot. And whereas uh, with the 765 nanometer going through the face plate, we have a nice donut. So two lasers are overlaid in the sample they are synchronized, so you see we have pulse excitation. Um, so first the excitation and the stat laser, and they are overlaid in the sample. Um, we use, as mentioned, the 640 nanometer pulsed diode laser. In addition, if you want to have multi-species stat also, you can use 595 or 660 nanometer excitation in addition. But we always have only one excitation, uh, sorry, one stat laser. So I forgot to mention here that actually um, this approach with this segmented faceplate was published by Matthias Royce and Johann Engelhardt from <coughs> Heidelberg. And uh, they called this approach easy stat because obviously it is quite simple. So uh, I'd like to continue with some proof of principle measurements. So first we look at small fluorescent beads. You look at crimson beads, 20 nanometer in diameter. You look at the confocal and the stat image, which shows much enhanced resolution. If you look at the cross section of a single bead here, we see that we have more or less diffraction limited resolution. 
260 nanometer, whereas in the STAT image, we have a very sharp peak offering here 28 nanometer. And the resolution of the STAT microscope strongly is uh, coupled with the STAT power that we use. So, um, in addition, uh, there are other parameters that you can tune to the right here. You see the delay between the excitation and the STAT laser pulse, for example. And we plotted here the full width half max in X and in Y for fluorescent beads and you see over the pulse delay between the two pulses. And you see if you go to the optimum, you have well below 50 nanometer resolution. And the, this is a quite robust parameter, so you can add plus or minus 200 picoseconds in between these two laser pulses, and still you are below the 50 nanometer. Interestingly, this delay between the excitation and stat laser pulse is different for different fluorophores, so it actually depends on the fluorescent's lifetime. So uh, we, we plot here to the right the delay of stat laser for different, for different dyes showing different lifetimes. And roughly said, for one nanosecond longer lifetime, you have to add 150 picoseconds between the two pulses. So uh, once we set up the instrument, we then continue with the data analysis. And uh, as I already mentioned, we use time resolution also. And here, I'd like to point out how we can utilize the picosecond timing information in our STAT data analysis. So this is uh, how our time resolved data look like. So um, typically, depending a little bit on uh, the parameters that you use in your, in in your instrument and uh, the samples that you measure, you see a peak, a very sharp peak in the beginning, and which uh, is coming from early spontaneous fluorescence before the stat pulse fully depletes the fluorescence. So it's more or less confocal resolution that is offered by these very fast photons. Whereas the fluorescence stemming from the center of the donut really gives us good, the much enhanced resolution. And uh, you can get rid of these very fast photons in different ways. You can just put a time gate and use uh, the, the, the slower photons here. Another possibility is to use fluorescent lifetime imaging. So you can fit the, this decay that you see here with two lifetimes. So you use a bi-exponential reconvolution model and then just neglect the fast lifetime component. I'll show an example also here. And then a third method that you could use is pattern matching, where you uh, create patterns for the stat peak and the, for the fluorescent lifetime, and then you fit the complete decay with two patterns. And uh, here I'll show also the, uh, the two species dis distinction then. But let me start with gated stat. So um, we also want to show the tubulin structure. So you have microtubulin from cells seen here in the confocal and in the raw stat image. If you now look at the fluorescence histogram from the raw stat data, it looks more or less like uh, what we see here. We just select a gate and we take on, so we uh, exclude the fast photons taking only uh, the fluorescence the longer for us is lifetime, plot this and have the gated stat image here. And if you look at the cross section up here and compare with the confocal and the raw state data, you see the tubulin strands to the right and down here you have a zoom in where you clearly see that, uh, okay, the stat raw data already give you enhanced resolution of course, but by gating you remove confocal contributions in your biological cells and you have an effective resolution enhancement here. So if you plot the red photons, you see here the neglected, it's more or less confocal um, resolution that you see here. And this is just a small section um, from a bigger measurement, so this was a section we were looking at. And here you see the tubulin strands in the confocal and in the gated stat image. So uh, the, the other approach uh, that I like to show is stat flim fluorescence lifetime imaging. Here on the example of DNA origami. So we look here at two rows with fluorescent dyes. So we have each 11 ATO 647N dyes 
these two rows that are 71 nanometers apart, and they are immobilized on a surface. See the confocal image, and if we now take the stat image, we see a histogram like here. We can fit this decay with two lifetimes. So uh, if you then plot the short lifetime, this, then you see that you mainly have confocal resolution, whereas when you take the long lifetime and plot these photons, you have a very sharp image. And uh, the lifetime that you see here is the same as the one that we see in the confocal image. And if you look at the cross-section, cross uh, you also can see that the two rows are nicely separated. So these samples were provided by the lab of Philip Tinnefeld and their new company, Gatterquant, that they just started. So the third approach that I wanted to talk about is that pattern matching. And here now I would like to add also two species analysis. So um, we here add another excitation wavelength. So we use 640 nanometer and 660 nanometer, both with the STAT laser on. So we use pulse interleaved excitation, 640 nanometer plus the STAT laser, and 660 nanometer plus the STAT laser, alternating in one measurement. And now we want to measure a sample that is labeled with two different red dyes. So we used here a barrier star 635P and ATO 647N. Um, <clears throat> in order to do this, we first now have to create the single patterns. Uh, we do this by um, measuring a sample with these pulse trains. And we use now two detectors which uh, detect slightly different wavelength ranges. So uh, we use a single species here, tubulin, labeled with a barrier star 635P with this pulse train, and then we create the pattern for this single species. And then we take the other pattern, or create the other pattern by a single species labeled sample here, with GNT with ATO 647N, measure with the same pulse trains and get a very different fluorescence pattern. Because these two dyes are both red dyes, but still show slightly different spectral properties. And now these two patterns can be applied to our measurement with a double labeled um, species sample. And then you can fit the two patterns and separate the two species. So you see in green the tubulin structures and in red the guillotine and this is working in the confocal as well as in the stat image. So here I'd like to thank uh, the lab of Markus Sauer from Würzburg, um, Thomas Niehurst and Anna Löschberger. They uh, prepared the samples for us, so thanks a lot. <laughs>